Hello, hello. I just wanted to talk about a, a, a devotion that I did on the 6th of August 2009 that I titled Transition. It was coming from, it stemmed from Ezra chapter 3 uh, through chapter 4, verse 23. 1 uh, Cor Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, uh, chapter 3, verse 4. That's probably a bit weird there, but let me read that again. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, verse 6 on to chapter 3 verse 4 Psalm 28 verse 1 through chapter uh, excuse me Psalm 28 verse 1 through 9 Proverbs chapter 20 verses 24 to 25 okay and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just stem off of what particular verses really made a huge impact for me that day um, actually just one the one scripture that stuck out above all the rest all the other verses there was um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 it says but a natural man does not accept the things of the spiritual world for they are foolishness to him and they cannot understand them because they are spiritual appraised outside of it being encouraged excuse me outside of, outside of it being encouraged mandate a mandatory by God for us to read his word daily I enjoy reading the word because it is going to always have something within it that is going to refresh my thinking on a specific topic like the verse that I am uh, that I'm sure that I'm not going to forget because it holds so much weight and importance and I'm gonna go ahead and read the verse again It's first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 it says but a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit uh, excuse me the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are they are because they are spiritually appraised, meaning one that is very natural, one that is without God and the belief of it, of God is spiritually appraised, not willing to even con, con, uh, understand the spirit of God because it seems to be so foolishness to him, and uh, he can't even comprehend it. And I always wondered how is that a fact if if we're natural, should I say, out the womb and don't have any knowledge of God um, per se, and we are to become a Christian? That's just a question I'm throwing out there. Maybe I have the answer. Uh, I know the answer, but maybe the answer is going to be listed within here, okay? In this verse that I, in this um, posting on my website that I have available here, it says, The verse informs me that when I'm sharing God to another person, that it is considered to be a natural man I mean you know a person that is considered to be a natural man quote unquote I have to allow God himself to control the situation because I will be talking and talking and talking and talking but the whole time he would be listening and possibly even agree with what I am sharing with him or her about God and not even totally want to take advantage of it and practice it within their own personal life and that's a waste of time. However, you know, by speaking about the truths and so forth about God and talking and talking and talking about uh, God to a natural person per se is somewhat going to have a nice effect on them when they reflect on, uh, you know, God within their life somehow. It's like, man, James did tell me about that. Or, man, that person really did bring up that. And then it all comes to uh uh, come to play and they remember what you say however it's kind of like um, practice you can only become better if you consistently practice in something now you are considered practice when you bless someone with the truth or uh, the knowledge of what the Bible is explaining that is considered practice for their life and it's like a seed it grows within them and the tree blooms um, to use a, a example but I got a better example personal example I was wa I was talking to someone for about three hours about God for a while. The, uh, the acknowledgement that he was uh, comprehending was there, excuse me, the acknowledgement that he was understanding and comprehending what I was saying was there, the desire to change and the, and the commitment seemed to be there, but days later he didn't change a thing. Should that discourage me? At the time it discouraged me deeply. About a year, after, a year later that individual who my natural who is my natural brother turned his life around 180 degrees and began to mature in specific areas note to self 
when God does his thing to change someone's life around, there isn't any confusion for the natural man that God is changing. Uh, meaning that when God is making the change, there's no confusion for that natural man. I can talk and talk and talk and talk, but when God is um, geared to make that change within that person, then that's when that change comes about. And that answers my question as to how does a natural man, some kind, I mean, how can a natural man understand the spiritual things of God and become a Christian if it's not, if they can't comprehend and understand the Spirit of God? But like I said, when God is involved, there's no question that God is um, the uh, changer of that person's life. It says the natural man is going to understand very clearly what the message of spiritual is brought. I mean, the message of spirituality when it's brought from God. Another question worth asking, well, did God use me? Like I was saying earlier, I can now answer it like this. God used me in a numerous God used me and numerous of other people in situations and influenced my brother to turn his life around. We were the puzzle pieces being used by God to finish God's project of transitioning. God knows what's going on in the natural life. We cannot. We have to allow God to do his transitioning. I personally knew we have to, I mean, I personally knew that we have to allow God to do this transition and someone. Um, but I want the best for people, and when they are not just taking advantage of that, of that exclusive deal, it gets on my nerves a bit. Meaning, when a person is not taking advantage of the exclusive deal that God is offering, hey, uh, be a Christian, and I'll do all this for you. And I don't like to pitch that out because people be like, oh man, I could become a Christian, and God's going to do all these wonderful things for me. It's partly true, partially. It's partly it's totally true however that should not be the 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 advertisement that is given to people for them to be a Christian that is not the case it takes hard sacrifice if anything people are going to despise you to pick your name not you know think what you're saying is true they're going to try to get you off your course they're going to become a speed bump build this mountain of doubt and shame that is not the case consistently love God and he will take care of the rest because a natural man can what is cannot comprehend the spiritual things of God. Only God can break that thing down for them and let them fully understand and grasp what's actually going to happen. I mean, what's actually happening. But it gets on my nerves when they don't take advantage of that exclusive deal. However, I have to take a step back and allow God to do His thing. Continuation. It says, when a person is not transitioning from natural man to spiritual man, I self I selfishly want to throw in the towel and give up on ministering and sharing God to that individual. But I found myself praying for God, I mean praying to God about the situation versus speaking to the natural man, the spiritual things, I mean about spiritual things, meaning I gave up on talking to that person as an individual and saying, well, this is this, this is that, this is what the Bible say, this is what God simply wants us to do, this and that, and boom, it was no change. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking it's going to be instant. Oh, man, he's going to be on fire for God, blah, blah, blah. He's going to be out there, you know, changing his life around. He's going to make it evident that he's going to make it evident that God got through to him and this and that. But that was my timeline. Like I said, God answers our prayers on his timeline. You have to be submissive to God and allow God to take care of what he needs to take care of. It says, now, now I see why. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 is so influencing, I mean so uh, influential in my life here. Alright, uh, also also when it comes to ministering to a natural man, your prayer, lifestyle, words, integrity, consistently, uh, consistency are involved as well. And I thank God for uh, adding value. Uh, God thanks uh, I'm praying this prayer. Sorry. God, thanks for adding value to people and keeping us encouraged about uh, discouraging situations, meaning keeping us focused on your outcome in, in the situation, not be focused on our outcome and being selfish. Simply put, thank you, God.